This is R2D Tech and today we've got one of the most exciting videos of 2020, which is of course the new MacBook Air with the M1 chipset, so stay tuned. So what is the M1 chipset, I hear you ask? And it's a chipset which is produced at Apple, so made for Apple computers, and it includes the GPU, CPU, and RAM, along with some other features. And there's many positives to doing this and only a few negatives. But what we'll do is we'll treat this like a normal video and we'll see where it takes us. So it should become clearer why there are so many positives as we go through the video. In terms of design, this MacBook Air has basically the same design as the last generation. So a really nice thin and light metallic unibody design. And also they advertise that scissor switch keyboard, which they call the magic keyboard. And to be honest, the only thing magic about this keyboard is that they managed to make it disappear a few years ago and then reappear recently. <laughs> Now that's not to say it's not a great keyboard, the scissor switch mechanism is definitely the way to go. It is definitely far superior to the butterfly mechanism which they tried out for a couple of years. We'll just forget that ever happened to be honest. And the trackpad is also excellent on this computer, just like on any Mac. I've used a Mac for a few years and I can definitely say the trackpads are absolutely excellent. Now another thing which I really like is they've kept on Touch ID in the top right hand corner of the keyboard which is really secure and a really quick way to access your laptop so I really like that. Shout out to Apple on that one. And the final thing to mention in the design section is of course colours and they've kept the same colours as the last generation so space grey, gold or silver which is a nice selection. Moving on to display, you get a 13.3 inch 2560 by 1600 60 hertz true tone display, which is absolutely great to be honest. That resolution is higher than 1440p, which will be perfectly sufficient for a laptop. And also the size 13.3 inches is actually quite large for the actual size of the laptop. So it is a very thin and light laptop, but you still get quite a large display, which I think is really great. So I can't really complain on the display front. Now let's talk about that M1 chip, which is probably the reason why you're watching this video. Now, the main reason that this is really important is that because Apple produced this chipset in-house, they can design it to work perfectly with their software, which in this case is macOS Big Store at the moment. And what that means is that it's gonna be extremely efficient, which can have some really good performance benefits as well. So Apple claimed that the CPU will be up to 3.5 times faster, the GPU will be up to five times faster, and you'll also get six hours extra battery life. So not only do you get a really great bump in specs, or like performance at least, but you also get an increase in battery life, which is quite unusual actually. And that's all down to that improved efficiency, which is why I think this computer is gonna be a huge success and is really gonna lead the way to the future of Macs or MacBooks. So one thing which I found really impressive is that they said that you could edit 4K footage or like two streams of 4K footage in ProRes on a MacBook Air and also run CAD softwares and everything like that. Now, I've, I used to have a MacBook Air and I tried running all of this stuff and it would just crash and overheat and it would just not work, to be honest. But this MacBook Air that they're advertising now doesn't have any fans, which means it will run silently, which is probably one of the most annoying things about older MacBooks, just how loud those fans get. But not only will it run silently, it will have improved specs and it will be able to run these crazy things like 4K ProRes footage and CAD and everything like that, which I would never even dream about running on a MacBook Air like a couple of years ago. So if it really does work out the way they're saying, then I think that might be the way to go. Like in-house chipsets would definitely be the way to go because they're so much more efficient than running like an Intel processor, which is made for a whole range of computers, so not properly optimized for that specific computer. Okay, so now that speech is over, let's go through the rest of the specs. So obviously you're getting the M1 chipset, and within that chipset you get eight gigabytes of RAM, regardless of which model you choose. And then there's two different models. So one model will give you 256 gigabytes of SSD storage with a seven core GPU. And the more expensive model will give you 512 gigabytes of storage with an eight core GPU. 
Obviously, if you can get the more expensive one, you're gonna get a slightly better performance and more storage as well. And keep in mind that storage is actually quite important when it comes to laptops, especially if you wanna download quite a lot of software and store a lot of files on the laptop. And that will cost you around an extra $200. So it might be worth considering. We'll get onto the price later. But if you're not really gonna use this MacBook for anything more than just document editing and stuff like that, then you might just go for the base model. Moving on to IO or input output, you're not really expecting a lot of ports on a computer like the MacBook Air, whereas if you were getting something like the MacBook Pro, I would understand if you expected to get lots of ports. So on this laptop, you're getting two USB Thunderbolt ports and both of them can support up to 6K external displays, which is pretty great but also you'll use one of them for charging and of course USB-C is just the superior charging method at the moment. Now on the other side of the laptop you're getting a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and it's nice to see they haven't got rid of this on their laptops as well and also the speakers will be pretty good on this laptop. Nothing to blow you away, but to be honest, in general, the speakers on Mac computers are pretty great. Now let's talk about that webcam, which unfortunately is still 720p. <sighs> I don't know what to say, like it's been so many years and especially now where everyone's using Zoom or Microsoft Teams and everything like that, you'd really expect them to upgrade this to at least a 1080p webcam. At least one thing I'll say is that they do have like free microphones on this laptop, so the audio will sound really good, it's just they won't see you that well. So I really hope in future models of this laptop and all of their laptops, they will give you a 1080p webcam. As usual, the final thing to talk about is the price, and there's two models, as I said earlier. That base model, which I described, will cost $999, and then the slightly upgraded model, which might be worth considering, will cost $1,249. Now, compared to Apple's smartphones, these prices aren't much more. And if they can do what they say, so edit 4K footage, run CAD softwares and everything like that without crashing and also silently because they don't have fans, then I think this laptop could be potentially a really good investment. So I would consider it. Of course, we've got to wait till lots of people test it out before you go and throw your money at it, but it could potentially be something really impressive and maybe worth investing in. That's it for this week. This new release definitely portrays a very interesting vision for the future of laptops, especially in terms of efficiency. I would definitely err on the side of caution though before buying this. Perhaps wait till a few reviews have come out just to see if all of Apple's claims check out. Other than that though, I think it's a really cool idea for the future, and if it does work out, then I'll be extremely impressed and perhaps might even have to consider getting one sometime in the future. Now, if you did like the video, then please leave a thumbs up because it really helps with the YouTube algorithm. And if you wanna see more content like this in the future, then smash that subscribe button and hit that notification bell below as well.